happiness <laughs> We shouldn't confine that happiness towards ourselves and just look out for our own happiness and satisfaction. We should also seek out those people who are less fortunate, who are in difficulty, and we should try and instill happiness in their heart as well. But prior to that, let us hear an excellence of reciting Salat upon the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In one narration, Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa Tayyiba Tahira radiallahu ta'ala anha. Ummul Mu'mineen. She says that she was sewing a garment when all of a sudden the light of the lamp extinguished the light went out and you can imagine in those days how difficult it would have got uh, pitch black darkness everywhere and she says meanwhile the needle that i was sewing with also fell and i could not locate it i didn't know where it was pitch dark and all of a sudden the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered the room. He graced the room with his noble presence. And when he did so, the entire room lit up. Meaning, due to the nur, the light on the blessed countenance, the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the entire room became illuminated. Subhanallah. And as a result of that nur that spread throughout the room, I was able to find my needle that had fallen. And then I said, May my father be sacrificed upon you, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How luminous is your face? How bright is your face? SubhanAllah. Meaning she had just first hand witnessed how the face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had lit up the entire room. There was pitch black there. There was darkness there. She dropped her needle. She couldn't locate it. She couldn't find it. But as soon as the Prophet alayhi wa sallam entered, the whole room became bright. And she is praising the Prophet alayhi wa sallam. How bright is your face? SubhanAllah. That is when the beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Wailul limalla yarani yom al qiyama." Woe to that person who will not see me on the day of judgment. Destruction for him. And Sayyidah Aisha radhiyallahu anha she said, "Who is that person who will not see on the day of judgment?" That meaning that ill-fated person, that unfortunate person, that deprived person. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, tell me who is that person? And he won't be honored with seeing you, beholding you on the day of judgment. Again, the Prophet sallam said the same thing. That destruction is for the one who will not see me on the day of judgment. And again she asked, she said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is that person who will not see you on the day of judgment? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied and answered by saying, Man zukirtu indahu falam yusalli alayya. That, oh Aisha, listen, the one who will not see me tomorrow on the day of judgment, the one who will be deprived of seeing my beautiful face, he is that person, that unfortunate person, before whom I was mentioned. Man zukirtu indahu. فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيَّ But he did not recite salat upon me. He did not recite salat upon me. He was heedless. He was neglectful in this regard. And the result of that, the consequence, the repercussion, is that he will not see me on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. Now, dear viewers, we have to ask ourselves as well. That in the month of Ramadan, did we develop a habit of reciting salat ala nabi? If yes, alhamdulillah. If no, then make an intention from now. Recite salat upon the Prophet alayhi salam. When he's mentioned before you especially, recite Salat upon him. You just heard that the one who does not recite Salat upon the Prophet ﷺ, despite the Prophet ﷺ being mentioned before him, will be deprived of seeing that beautiful, that nurani face of the Prophet ﷺ. That face of the Prophet ﷺ which the Sahabi Hassan bin Thabit an describes and says, Wa ahsanu min kalam That I have not seen, my eye has not seen anyone more beautiful than you. Wa ajmalu min kalam nisa. And no woman has given birth to anyone more handsome than you. That, O oh, beloved, وسلم, you have been created free from every flaw, every blemish. It's as if you were created the way you wanted to be created. Allahu Akbar. 
And a person who doesn't recite Salat upon the Prophet ﷺ, even though the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned before him, he'll be deprived of seeing the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment. May Allah Jalla wa Ala make us from amongst those who remember the Prophet ﷺ abundantly and recite Salat upon him. Ameen. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So inshallah let us hear about the importance of distributing the happiness of Eid. That when the day of Eid comes, yes, it's a day of rejoicing, the day of showing happiness, the day of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We wear new clothes, we eat delicious foods, we visit each other's homes and we engage in conversations that are pleasing to our hearts and we enjoy the day, alhamdulillah. But as Muslims, we should also look at our fellow ummatis as well. Because no doubt, there is no doubt in this fact that where many people are celebrating Eid in a way that they want to, there are many who cannot celebrate Eid in that way. There are many who financially lack the provisions to celebrate Eid properly. There are many who can provide for their children on the day of Eid, give them the clothes they want, the gifts they want, the presents they want. And there are those Muslims who on the day of Eid have to make do with what they have. Every Eid their children are disheartened. Every Eid their children face difficulty. And they see society, they see how people celebrate Eid. And it hurts their feelings that they can't celebrate in the same way. So given this situation, what is our responsibility now? To keep that happiness solely to ourselves? or to try and distribute that happiness. SubhanAllah, it's often said that there are two things that only increase by distributing them, sustenance and happiness. Inshallah, if you give to the makhluk of Allah, you give to your fellow Muslims, you support them financially, Allah will bless you as well. And you try to instill happiness into the hearts of others, Allah will keep you happy as well. And we know the narration that after the obligations, obligatory acts, the best amal is to place happiness in the heart of a Muslim, to please a fellow Muslim. Now on the day of Eid, do we remember this? Or is it the case that we're so caught up and so engrossed in our own activities and happiness that we forget everyone else? And the beauty of Islam is that we can plan in advance. That in the month of Ramadan, we can give sadaqah fitr, we can support others financially before even Eid arrives. That I'm going to send you money or I'm going to aid you. Alhamdulillah, there's many avenues of giving charity in this day and age. So in advance, you can arrange for a person to celebrate Eid in a nice way with his family. And when you do so, that happiness will come back to you as well. Many folds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you more. And let us hear in this regard a beautiful account. It's very relevant. Sayyiduna Abdurrahman bin Amr al-Awza'i rahmatullahi alayhi. He has said, on the night of Eid al-Fitr, one of my neighbors was very poor came to my home and requested me to give him some money so that he may celebrate Eid happily with his family members. And this pious predecessor, Sayyiduna Abdurrahman bin Amr al-Awza'i rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, I discussed with my wife, I consulted with her, and I said, the 25 dirhams that we have, that I've gathered for Eid, we're going to use them on Eid, shall I give them to the neighbor who is suffering, who is in difficulty, so that he can celebrate Eid properly? What shall I do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me more if I give to him. And the wife was pious. She was a saliha. She was a righteous woman. She said, yes, help him. Help that destitute neighbor. So he gave the 25 dirhams to his neighbor. When that neighbor took hold, took possession of that 25 dirhams, he left in a state of great happiness. Making dua for his pious predecessor, Sayyidina Abdul Rahman. And shortly after he left, another person came. And it's narrated that this person held the feet of Sayyidina Abdul Rahman, who has just given 25 dirhams to his destitute neighbor. He held his feet and he told him cryingly that he was the escaped slave of his father, meaning the father of Sayyidina Abdul Rahman, rahmatullahi alayhi, who has just performed an act of generosity moments earlier. He further said that he had returned because he felt guilty. And then he gave him 25 dinars which he had earned and requested him to accept them. Accepting the dinar, Sayyiduna Abdul Rahman freed that person. And then he said to his wife, look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the mercy of Allah jalla wa ala. He has given us dinars in exchange for dirhams. Allahu Akbar. Dinars, 
gold currency, gold coins, and dirham, silver coins. So what he's saying to his wife is, look, we gave 25 dirham, silver coins in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah jalla wa ala gave us gold coins in return, 25 dinar in return. So subhanallah, what do we learn dear viewers? That this act of his, this great act of benevolence, subhanallah, giving preference to his neighbor of his own family, which was so accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah jalla wa ala gave him much more. You can't compare 25 dirhams with 25 dinar. One is a silver currency, one is gold currency. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him manifold. Now we learn about the ithar, the self-sacrifice, the uh, giving priority to other Muslims over oneself. How much do we do this? Is this prevalent in our communities or not? And if it's not, we need to develop this. And when we have surplus, and many people have surplus, many people have extra. And that extra, they think, I will use that for my family, my offspring, my coming generations. What if you gave that surplus in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, you give zakah. Zakat is obligatory. But beyond that, voluntary donations, optional donations. And like you just heard, somebody gave all of his savings for Eid to someone else. Allah blessed him on that very night with 25 dinars so that he could also celebrate Eid as well. Now this is the way of the elders. That they would distribute happiness. They would have yaqeen and i'tiqad, this firm belief. Allah Azza wa Jal is seeing me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the intention of my heart. If I give for his sake, if I try and make another Muslim happy, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about this. And when Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, knows about this, he will grace me with his generosity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless me with more bounties in life. This is the aqeedah of a believer. This is the yaqeen that we should have. So we pray for the sake of this pious elder of ours. That Allah gives us tawfiq to show generosity like this as well. So that we earn the reward of Allah and we're also blessed with the mercy and generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And moving on, another account, and this is an account of the great Khwaja Gharib Nawaz rahmatullahi alayhi, Mu'inuddin, Hassan Sanjari rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, who even today, centuries later, rules the hearts. Meaning they, the awliya Allah, are true kings. A worldly king, when he dies, that's it, his kingdom is finished or his rule is finished. He no longer has. Uh, control over people's hearts and even if he did in the world it was through fear and when he dies when he leaves the world that's it people forget about him but look at the awliya Allah centuries later still people have awe people have reverence towards them people honor them and respect them why that is true kingship that they rule the hearts of the believers and Khwaja Gharib Nawaz rahmatullahi alayhi subhanallah from his name you can tell the one who would bestow upon the less fortunate those who were in poverty Khwaja Gharib Nawaz rahmatullahi alayhi would give to them, would grant to them. He was a solace for them. He was a source of comfort and peace for them. And this blessed characteristic was in him from day one. He had this act of giving firmly embedded in his nature from day one. He was very generous. There's an account of his childhood. Now children, it's known that children are not those who share. Children actually fight each other. And they get into quarrels. If you just gather a few children together and give them a few toys or a few items to play with, before long they'll be arguing and fighting. He took my toy and he wants mine and I'm not going to give it to him. And they start quarreling and disputing and fighting. That's what kids do. But Khwaja Gharib Nawaz Rahmatullahi Ali was not a normal child. This incident is from his childhood. That on the day of Eid, he wore new clothes. And he made an intention to go and perform Eid Salah at the masjid. On the way there, he saw another child, another person. And that child, it was the day of Eid, but he didn't have new clothes to wear. He didn't have nice clothes to wear. He was wearing tatty, worn-out clothes. And Khwaja Gharib was, rahmatullahi Ali, saw that person and felt sorry for him, felt pity for him. And showing the greatest level of generosity, do you know what he did? He took that child home with him, gave his own new clothes to that child, and he himself wore old clothes. And then they both happily went to perform Eid Salah together. SubhanAllah, this is the way of the awliya Allah. That on the day of Eid, they see someone needy, someone in difficulty, they reach out to them, they help them. They look at this as an opportunity to attain the mercy, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not neglectful. They're not, they don't have tunnel vision and they don't think only about themselves. They think about the rest of the believers as well. And Khwaja Gharib Nawaz rahmatullahi ta'ala was like this. From a young age, as you just heard, he would distribute, he was generous, he helped people and he did that throughout his life and even today through his spiritual power he's helping people as well. 
with the power granted to him by Allah Azza wa Jal. So, the lesson that we learn on the day of Eid, when we know someone is in difficulty, and that difficulty can be in many forms. It's not necessary that the only difficulty he's facing is that he has a lack of finance. No, there could be many other difficulties. It may be the case that your neighbor, someone in your locality, on your road, in your street, is from another country. He's come here to study or for any other reason. He doesn't have any family members. You know, he's a Muslim. And there is an opportunity there for you to reach out to him. To remind him that, look, you may have come to a different country. You may have no relatives here. You may be sad at this fact that normally back at home, it was a lively environment. People in the family were preparing for Eid. And you remember your parents. You remember your siblings, your relatives. You visited each other. You enjoyed Eid and now you're in another country, you don't have anyone here, but listen, I will fill that gap for you. I will call you to my house. I will visit you on the day of Eid. I will make sure that we share our happiness. I will ensure that you do not feel that absence. And this is what we should do in our locality. That, that person, he may have enough money to celebrate Eid in a nice way. But what he's lacking is something else. He's lacking family members. He's lacking loved ones. He doesn't have anyone here. He doesn't know anyone here. But you know he's a Muslim. You know he's just fasted in the month of Ramadan. You know that it's the day of Eid. And he wants some memories. Everybody wants memories of Eid. Good memories. And there you should reach out to him. You distribute that happiness that will come back to you. So like this, we should find mawaqe. We should find uh, scenarios, situations where we can try and earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can try and distribute that happiness that has entered our life on the day of Eid. And one great way of distributing happiness is performing Silatul Rahm, uh, maintaining ties with your blood relatives. And this is necessary anyway, it's fard in Islam. On the day of Eid, you can demonstrate that beautifully. Visit your parents, visit your siblings, visit your uncles and aunties. Give them value, speak to them, have nice conversations with them. If possible, and you're able to, give them gifts as well. So they can cherish those moments they spent with you. They can remember those moments they spent with you. Leave lasting impressions on the hearts of your family members, your loved ones, your blood relatives. But today, what's happening? Ma'azallah, summa ma'azallah, the ummah uh, is becoming disunited. Blood brothers and sisters are not even speaking to each other. They're not on speaking terms. People have fallen out with their parents. Parents have disowned children. And if you look at the reasons behind it, a lot of times it's trivial. A lot of the times it's over things that are temporary, over mal, over wealth, over these kind of things, over properties, over assets, over a marriage proposal, over something like that. So it's a very uh, bad situation we find ourselves in. But the day of Eid is a day when we have to swallow our pride. If somebody is not talking to us, if somebody's fallen out with us, we don't speak to them, they don't speak to us, swallow your pride. Ring that person. If possible, visit that person. Congratulate them on the day of Eid. Pray for them. Show that you care for them and love them. And inshallah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala is the turner of the hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change someone's heart. It may be the case that a person has developed dislike for you, but in an instant, Allah Rahman can change that dislike into like, into love. That person can develop affection for you. Why? Your intentions were sincere. You wanted to please your fellow Muslims, especially your blood relatives. And we shouldn't let go of this very easily. That I don't think he'll change. And he's a very bad person. And, you know, uh, he's a very stubborn person. No matter what I do, he won't accept it. Try. Continue trying. Why lose hope for? Continue doing your bit. Have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Distribute that happiness. Inshallah, those who unite others, Allah will unite them as well. Those who bring people together, Allah jalla wa ala will grant him closeness to his court. So, these are the things that we should be doing on it. Distributing happiness as well. If you know somebody in the locality is in financial difficulties, try and reach out to them. If you have relatives in a different country, or you know Muslims in your village back home in a different country are struggling, give rations for them, give some monetary donations towards them, help them and enable them to spend Eid in a way that is memorable for them. So in a nutshell, what we need to do is we need to accommodate. We need to distribute happiness. We need to uh, ensure on our part, that happiness from us is reaching many people. And it's not mahdood, limited to just the four corners of our home, the four walls of our home. No, we should follow the prophetic way. 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his nature, his disposition, his blessed character was such that anyone who spent time with him felt that the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam loved him the most. We need to develop that. We need to give time to people. We need to listen to them. People have difficulties that they want to speak about. Lend your ear. Show that you care. Try and provide solutions. Try and help them. And on that day of Eid, that's a beautiful day. That's a day where we should always try and look for ways to spread this happiness and uh, this serenity, this tranquility that we have in our lives to others as well. And Allah Jalla wa'ala enable us to distribute happiness on Eid al-Fitr and throughout our lives as well. Not on the day of Eid only, but throughout our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who when others meet us, they are pleased in meeting us. They do not want to run away from us. They do not dislike to meet us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who is friendly to one and all, who people want to meet, people think about, people contact and say, I was thinking about you. How are you? How's everything? And we should strive to be Muslims who leave a lasting impression in the hearts of people, that people have developed a place for us in their hearts. And because of that, they have imani love. They have uh, love based on faith, based on iman, and not just based on the dunya. Allah Jalla wa Ala enable us to follow the way of the aslaf, the elders, in distributing happiness on the day of Eid. Ameen bijahin nabi al-Ameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Eid is here, Eid is here, Eid is here, Eid is here. Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah.